So what, did James Gunn direct some kind of Guardians of the Galaxy squad? Kinda, and it's awesome. The Suicide Squad, not to be confused with Suicide Squad, the first film of whatever this thing is, a trilogy, a, a saga, who knows? I mean, Fast and the Furious started out with The Fast and the Furious and later went to just Fast and Furious. This is doing the opposite, so now I'm completely confused as how things are named in this world. People have been throwing out the term soft reboot and that that's probably kind of appropriate, although there is some carryover characters from Suicide Squad, not the Suicide Squad, Suicide Squad, that are in this. Margot Robbie, of course, is back as Harley Quinn. And here, I think Margot Robbie truly has perfected this character. Whether or not it's because she's more comfortable with the role, because she's done it a few times, she's, she's more familiar with the character now, or because she has a more competent director leading the charge here. I'd like to think it's a combination of both, but unlike her previous outings in Suicide Squad, not the Suicide Squad, Suicide Squad and Birds of Prey, here she's not the only show. She's not the only thing to enjoy about the film. We have ourselves quite the cavalcade of fools on display, and they are fantastic. And I appreciate that Gunn goes back to his staples, his bread and butter actors, his, uh, his alums from like Slither. I mean, we got... Nathan Fillion in this. We have his brother, of course, Sean Gunn, and then there's old reliable himself, Michael Roker. A few other members return from Suicide Squad, not the Suicide Squad, Suicide Squad. We have Jai Courtney as Captain Boomerang, who until this day still eludes me how he continues to find work, but uh, we'll just leave it there. And then there's Amanda Waller, played by Viola Davis. I'm gonna throw him in a hole and throw away the hole, or whatever stupid ass line she says, she's back. She's good. She's solid. Why am I just going through the roll call of characters? We know who's in this, right? We've been, we've been following the movie. You might not have seen it yet, or maybe you did, and you just want to hear my thoughts on it. Uh, I think I started by saying it's awesome, or, I, or it's great, or whatever take I use, but I loved the film, okay? I loved it. I'm going to be doing a movie feud in a few days here against Guardians of the Galaxy 1. I'm also going to be doing a movie feud against Suicide Squad, the first one. I'm going to keep correcting it. I'm going to keep making it known that the naming convention is just a disaster. James Gunn has already proven he's a talented writer and director, and this just solidifies that even further. He's juggling over a dozen different unique characters, ranging from a super jacked John Cena all the way down to a disgusting looking CG weasel. And then there's my personal go-to of the film, King Shark, voiced by Sylvester Stallone, who was also briefly in Guardians of the Galaxy 2. So James Gunn, he, he likes his actors, he likes bringing them in. It's not uncommon for directors, but I just find it... I find everything James Gunn does a little bit more fascinating, because even his acting choices aren't these A-listers, you know? Some of them are like way down in the D, the D listing, and that's cool, that's great. That wasn't disrespectful to Stallone. Stallone is A-list, he will always be A-list in my mind. That's Rocky Balboa, that's John Rambo, that's Carter, or the guy from Get Carter. If you're familiar with James Gunn's more R-rated works, like Slither or even Super, the indie superhero film, you'll know that he's not afraid to show blood, He's not afraid to close up on, on carnage. He's not afraid to zoom in on uh, body dismemberment. Hell, there's a character that can disattach his arms uh, just on call. And he does not hold back on this film. Lots of people die. There's lots of carnage. And it looks so good from beginning to end. I can't think of a single scene or moment that pulled me out of the film and I thought, man, that's really rough looking. That's just awful. No, there's no shoddy CG work here. And I think it's because he, he doesn't have that Disney polish to this one. It is grittier, it's grimier. There's rough edges in this film. It's not, a, it's not a pretty movie by any means, yet it is. It revels in its own filth. Let's put it that way. If you're feeling really burnt out about superhero movies too, I got good news for you. This does not feel like a superhero movie. They're doing heroic things. But how it's presented and how it plays out, just it just feels more like a, an action uh, comedy. He grounds it in such a great way. I mean, our heroes, they're, they're dressed up like idiots for the most part. One dude has, you know, like Peacemaker looks like he's wearing a silver toilet on his head. Uh, Idris Elba looks like he'd rather be sitting at a bar at 3 in the morning, closing up shop, you know, drinking his life away. And by the way, that, that dude... I know there was talks like a year ago about him being James Bond. He should absolutely be James Bond. This guy just oozes coolness. This guy just oozes smoothness. He's like a drink. 
he just goes down real nice, and I think he should be playing James Bond. If you're a parent wondering if your kids can see the film, well, maybe you should ask the parents in front of me at the theater who took their four-year-old and see what that kid had to say. I don't typically judge, but I was having a hard time deciding whether my nine-year-old could see it because he really enjoys the first Suicide Squad called Suicide Squad, not The Suicide Squad. I will not knock him for that. He's nine. He's not a grown adult that can understand the difference between a good, well-made film and a dumpster fire. And uh, I, you know, I want him to enjoy movies, so more power to him. We own Suicide Squad. We own that thing. And he, he watches it pretty. He likes Killer Croc. And I really want him to see the new one, but man, it's, he, he, I, he's not ready. He's not mature enough to handle it. I don't really care if my kids hear swearing or excessive violence. As long as they know the difference between right and wrong, what you can appropriately say in public and how you can act, and my nine-year-old's just not mature enough to make that decision. My 12-year-old girl, absolutely. She sees pretty much anything she wants. But if you're on the fence, you should know that there is a good amount of swearing. Uh, for the pervs out there, there's a tiny little sprinkle of nudity. Not much, not enough to get you into the theaters for that, but if you're a perv, you can go for Margot Robbie and, and be pretty happy with what you get. A lot of action, and it's good stuff. It's violent action. There's there's heads getting blown off, there's blood everywhere, it's creative, it's violent, it's, it's, it's right up my alley. So if you're going into this preparing for Guardians of the Galaxy, but in the DCEU, you're going to get that in the sense that James Gunn writes these characters in a way that you can feel like you're relating to them, even if they have these wild powers or just horrible backstories, you still can find a way to connect. They all have their quirks, there's lots of jokes, there's tons of great little tiny twists in the film where James will present something one way and then he'll immediately flip the script or he'll wait a few minutes or 10 minutes down the road, it'll come back and he'll be like, oh, what, I thought you were, uh, wow, you tricked me on that. I didn't think you were gonna go that way and you did. I know that was terrible, but I'm trying to be vague. I want you to see the movie however you can. I was giving movies nonsensical scores at the end, but I'm not gonna do that anymore. I think I'll come up with a new system that's that's more like absolutely must watch or avoid at all costs sort of a thing, and I'll, I'll come up with something, I'll, I'll flesh it out. But for now, this is an absolutely must watch. How does this play into the DCEU, you might be thinking? I don't know. I don't really know what's going on over there. I think that they're just trying to make good movies at this point, and then down the road they can start bridging them together. That, that's me talking out of my ass, but that's what I would guess, and that's honestly what I hope they're doing, because that seems like the best, smartest approach. Those are my thoughts on The Suicide Squad, the, the sequel, kind of, to Suicide Squad, the first movie, Suicide Squad, the second one's got the the at the end. If you agreed with me, leave it in the comments. If you disagree, oh, still, leave it in the comment. I'd like comments. that I think YouTube likes that for the algo, for the algorithm. Like the video if you had some fun, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll hopefully see you around. Oh, hey, you're still here. I saw, sorry, how embarrassing. Uh, I guess I could just promote my Patreon if you didn't know. I'm on Patreon at patreon.com slash adamdoesmovies. You can join there for as low as a dollar and get access to my hit show, The Cringe. You can also join right here on YouTube via the join button. Hey, it's your decision. It's your life. Either way, I'm here. So, see you around.